What's up guys, welcome to uh, The Rundown and Friends. I'm FSVU's multimedia editor, Jackson Tarpley, alongside editor-in-chief, Perry Costadakis, and assistant arts and culture editor, Dion Sandville. Um, so today we're talking about J. Cole's For Your Eyes Only. Uh, but first off, a little introduction about ourselves. Um, so like I said, I'm Jackson Tarpley. Uh, my top five rappers, we're gonna run through this. Number one is Logic. Uh, if you know me, you know I'm a huge Logic fan. Everybody knows. Uh, number two is actually J. Cole. Uh, I've been a huge Cole fan for a long time. Uh, three, Kanye. Four is uh, probably Kendrick. And then number five is N.W.A. I know they're a group, but love those guys. Uh, Perry, what about you, man? See, you went modern with yours. I did. So I guess I'm going to have to go modern with mine. Fair so enough. my top five right now, I guess, will be... Kendrick number one. I don't think anybody can touch him. True. Artist wise, lyric wise, pushing the boundaries, you know. Two, I'm gonna have to go Kanye, even though like I think people can rap better than he does on Life of Pablo. Like recently, true, he's been true. more like I'm just gonna put the music for yeah. it. But he's still doing. It. He's still putting out albums. He's not like Jay Z, like just selling his album to right. Samsung, getting the quick mail. Mm -hmm. um, three, I'm gonna go Chance. Just, yeah, just up and coming. Yeah, yeah, just up and coming. <laughs> doing his thing. Four, I'm gonna probably go with Vince Staples. Because I think True. that he is a severely underrated guy. I agree. Great personality. Mm -hmm. Raps really well. True. And has only really been trying hard for the past three years. And then five, I'm gonna go with Outcast. I'm gonna copy you with the group, and I'm gonna steal Dion before he can even go. So I'm gonna put even more pressure on him. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll even say that I think Big Boy is better than Andre 3000. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. In terms of pure rap, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So we go. Let's go with the hot takes. Dion, what do you All right. Mean? Number one is Kanye West, without a doubt, my mind. True. Uh, number two is Kendrick. Like. Kendrick can outrap Kanye any day on his worst day, but as far as artistry goes, Kanye's like just he's like the greatest yeah. artist of our generation. Mm -hmm. Number three, I'm gonna have to go with Drake, and you know even though I may not like everything he does outside of the booth, he, he has some he has some classics. Number four is Isaiah Rashad because he's he he's fighting with Drake, but Drake has more work. But Isaiah Rashad, he's got the music he's got the music for the soul. Mm -hmm. Number five, I'm going with Outkast because like that was like. The, my first like real introduction to, like rap and um, I mean sometimes I like Big Boy more sometimes like Andre I don't really have a preference I don't understand most of them sometimes because they're southern <laughs> accents True. but like, as far as like their sound goes like they introduced me to that, uh, rap and my sixth man is Kodak Kodak. Yeah. All right. That's coming out left field. Yeah. All right. I like he it. He has a lot of workout and he's from the hometown. Broward True. County. Got to rep. So, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So I'm the only one with J. Cole in uh, my top five. So this will be for interesting, yeah. make for interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Let's just jump right into it. So For Your Eyes Only, J. Cole's uh, latest album uh, dropped a little over a month ago. A couple months ago, something like that. Uh, there's been a lot of hype around it, honestly. A lot of people are saying that it's different from J. Cole's uh, other style, and uh, it's definitely very raw. That was my first take on it. Um, other than that, uh, I when I first listened to this album, I remember my friends texted me like, hey, the J. Cole album dropped. Like There was so much anticipation uh, going into this. Literally ran uh, right home from whatever I was doing that night and just like listened to it straight through. It took me a couple times to really like get it and understand uh, what the lyrics were talking about. Um, but I didn't really understand the whole backstory, which we'll get into later. Um, but first take, like for me, I thought it was, like I said, really raw. Um, a really like, like really subtle beats, slower beats. Uh, you can definitely tell that J. Cole wanted the listeners to focus on his lyrics more so than like the beats and the production. Uh, that was at least my opinion. Um, and then straight off, I mean, when you have a song like Immortal uh, with that hard intro uh, and J. Cole just really comes in and hits you with like a really, really hard uh, first verse, uh, to me, I, I got hooked. Uh, and then from there, there's a couple slower songs like the She's Mine song and stuff like that. Um, but for me, it was just, it was really raw. Like I've said that a few times, but that's my first take about it. What do you guys think, Perry? Huh. So, I want to really classify, classify myself as a J. Cole hater the same way I would classify myself maybe as like a Drake hater. Okay, true. Like a big Sean, like, unenthusiast. <laughs> unenthusiast, But, right. uh, I like J. Cole. I think he's moderately boring sometimes. Okay. I think his, like, lines get 
a little cheesy, but I think, like, he is a good human being, mm-hmm. like, very good human being. Uh, yeah, I And I think that he, because he produces his own songs, and he has, like, a good sense of, like, what the song should be. Right, so I'm, right. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt most of the time. Okay. So, 2014 Forest Hills Drive, pretty good album. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't, like, for me, like, oh, my God, like, wow. Like, sure. Born Center, not a fan. Cold World Sideline Story, I liked because I was still yeah. so a senior in high school, and okay, I was like, true. yeah, this is your nice yeah, watch, yeah. like, woohoo. <laughs> uh, Friday Night Lights, I love. I That's love that, one. yeah. yeah. I so, like I was a big J. Cole mixtape guy, like, still, oh, like, true. yeah, so, like, I'm, I'm like, like, okay. Like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, I liked him before he was cool, right. <laughs> but I like For Your Eyes, like, I don't okay. love it, like, I, okay. I didn't, like, consider it, like, it's better than Views, like, we'll go back to the Drake yeah, like, yeah, 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 I would say that it's better than... Still brazy, even maybe like okay. to give it maybe like maybe not like I don't know that maybe was a little bit too far, but I think <laughs> the way it starts is yeah very hard very yeah. dark but like yeah, it's yeah. touching like J right. Cole like is not like he's way better at Drake than being like I'm actually emotional because yeah, he like kind yeah. of like carries actual emotions right right, right for sure, but then you listen to all like it's just. Double Platinum with no features is, like, one of the greatest memes of our generation. Yeah. But yeah. listening to the same human being's voice for an entire album, like... It's true. Like, it gets grating. Like, it's yeah. so, like, I don't yeah. want it. Like, J. Cole, thank you for only having yourself. Like, I appreciate it. Right, right. That. But I can't do it. It still gets a little boring. Yeah, it gets a little boring. I like... Deja Vu might be my favorite on it. Okay. Um, yeah, I like Deja Vu mm-hmm. a lot. Okay. I'm a big fan of, like, the, like, yelling, like, course. Like, yeah. I love when yeah, that happened. Yeah. He, he did it on, um, he did on what song? On, Was it, uh, uh Villain Mentality? Force of, yeah. Oh, on Force of Drive? Well, yeah, he, yeah, he does it on another song on, it's Play like Yeah, he does oh, it on G-O-M-D. Yeah, exactly. I, like, exactly. I don't know exactly. why. It's just, yeah. It's, it's good, nice yeah. yeah. So I like that he does it. Like, I like the sounds he does, but I almost sometimes either wish it was J. Cole rapping over somebody else's beat. I feel that. Somebody yeah. rapping over I mean, J. Cole. Black beats. Friday. Yeah. yeah like, Kendrick oh, and J. Yeah, Cole. Like, that was good. Yeah. J. Cole on DJ Khaled's album. Like, yes. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. it was like, I might retire. Like, wow. Like, yeah. J. Cole That's has hard. the capacity to be very illuminating and true, like, deep. True. But, like, he gets yeah. into some of I mean, when you talk about 2014 Forest Hills Drive, I feel like that album, he was like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to go double platinum with no features. Like, I'm trying to get on the radio. I'm trying to get recognized. I mean, he was recognized before, but he really tried to prove himself. Now I feel like he's just abandoned that altogether. And he said, look, I want to tell a story. I have something I'm sitting on. I want to put it out there. And I don't really care what the fans think. Like, I just want to do it. Yeah, with um, respect. Yeah, right. But, Dion, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, as far as J. Cole goes as a rapper, I think J. Cole's nice, to quote BMX <laughs> in that Breakfast Club interview. True. But he's nice. Uh, he has a spot in my top ten. Mm-hmm. But um, I first got introduced to him around the time Sideline Story came out. And, you know, I thought he was... I, 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 I went on record saying I thought he was like a Drake carbon copy, but that's because I didn't really go into his mixtape stuff. I just heard like you know can't get enough, yeah, like all those yeah, yeah. corny you know singles. <laughs> corny. But um, talk about that. Uh, the the time I like it snapped and I became like a fan was um, when Cole Summer came out in the Truly Yours Two mixtape, yeah, and I realized gosh. like he made his own beats and mm-hmm. you know that soul still has, he has that soul with him. So ever since then I was a fan. Favorite album is probably Born Sinner without a doubt. Same. Um, all yeah. the J. Cole enthusiasts, like, Friday Night Lights is their holy bible. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I think it's okay. It's a little long. Yeah, I can yeah. do it without some songs. Mm-hmm. But um, I got introduced to this uh, album because uh, my roommate had Apple Music, and he said J. Cole dropped the album. So he played, like, the first four songs up until Villain, uh, Villain Tad- Mentality. Yeah. And uh, if the first track, uh, For Whom the Bell Tolls, yeah. very slow. Yeah, it's like, more an intro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's not really the... Stark sort of difference from... Um, the first song on Born Center. For it's sure. Yeah. Very stark difference. So I was like, all right, kind of slow. But then again, mm-hmm. the first song on Forest Hills Drive was slow. Yeah. So true. I was like, all right. Then the second song, it's hard hitting. I was like, yeah, right, this yeah. is the J. Cole I like. For sure. And then the third track, uh, Deja Vu. Yeah. I'm not having it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah, it. I agree. Not not too big of a fan of that one. I don't, I don't know why. Everybody yeah. seems to like it, but. It's very, it's whack. It falls, it falls <laughs> flat to me. Like, I don't like the, I know the Bryson Tiller, whatever the controversy was the beat. I know the, they made the beat first and Bryson Tiller stole it. I don't care. At that point, I think, honestly, even if Bryson Tiller never made the song, mm-hmm. if, um, what's it called? What's the name of the song? Exchange. If Exchange oh, never right. came out and you just had that song, I would still think that that song could have been better on a different beat. Mm-hmm. Because, like, he has other songs about, like, going after girls with guy, with boyfriends, right, like, right. Uh, Higher yeah. and um, Dreams. And mm-hmm. they had, like, 
you know, sample type beats. Right. So they're better. But either way, the lyrics are trash. Um, on a scale <laughs> of one to ten, the girls are hundred, and I want it. Yeah, yeah. It's just. It's just God, well, there's some there's some corny. I was gonna talk get into this. There's some cornball lines on. Wait, on did, did he talk about there. farting on? There are some this? fart references. I, <laughs> I don't I don't want to like quote it exactly, but there is there is definitely he loves some fart references. I don't know why. Yeah, that's but I mean, I think for me, <laughs> like it's a it's a good song, but there's a lot of corny lyrics in uh, folding clothes. Oh, I mean, yeah. like, why, like yeah. uh, photo clothes, watching Netflix, like catching up, uh, catching up on our shows, and then he's like talking about eating breakfast with almond milk. Yeah, like come on, Jay Cole. I mean, I mean, he's got much. He made a whole song about losing his virginity. Okay, that's, <laughs> which is was one of the most popular songs on uh, twenty fourteen Forest Hills Drive, which was funny for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's just that's just what it is. Um, but yeah, so now we can talk. Okay, so when I first heard For Your Eyes, it was good, it was surface level, Didn't I, I thought the song, I knew like She's Mine was about, first one was about his, uh, his wife, second one was about his daughter, um, but I didn't really realize the whole backstory. So I'll shed some light on it real quick. So the whole, the whole album is For Your Eyes Only, not for our eyes, not for the fans' eyes, not for his eyes, but for the daughter of his friend that was murdered in gang violence. And he names him in the album as James McMillan Jr., but that's really not his real name. Obviously, he kept it uh, hidden for, you know, confidentiality. But when you really listen to it with that in mind, it becomes a lot more meaningful, at least at least in my mind. Um, he talks about, even on Ville Mentality, you can hear the little girl's voice talking about how her daddy was killed and he uh, she didn't go to his funeral. Um, and then even still, I mean, on For Your Eyes Only, the song, on the last song that's eight minutes uh, on the album, the last verse talks about literally... It was so obvious to me when I heard it again. It was crazy that I didn't pick on pick this up before. It literally talks to the daughter and it tells the whole story about this guy. We'll call him James, calling J Cole, saying that hey, I feel like my life is about to end. I feel like I'm about to get killed. Uh, he says, I want you to write down my story because you know it, and I want you to tell it to my daughter when she's old enough. So obviously J Cole didn't want to have to do this. He didn't want to have to like uh, tell you know the daughter of his deceased friend, uh, but he did. And when you listen to the whole album with that in mind, it becomes a little more meaningful because it's really conceptual in that sense, at least to me. Um, so did you guys th- did you guys read up on that or did you guys like get that no, originally? I no, I was waiting for you to explain it actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, yeah, it was it was really at first a conspiracy theory, um, and like my friend sent it to me and he goes, "Dude, read this! Like, it's a fan theory. It's like crazy accurate." And I read it and I was like, "This seems really true." And then somebody from Dreamville later like confirmed it to the public, said, "Okay, this is true. Like, this is actually true." He hasn't confirmed it, but he's never going to. I mean, that's yeah. just terrible. Cool. He was married um, for like a year. Yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he likes to do things in secret. Right, he keeps on the DL. Um, but yeah, so like it, it really has a lot more of a meaning when you think about it on like that kind of a conceptual level. And there's a couple songs on there. I'm not sure if he sticks with the concept or if he kind of veers off because yeah. like she's mine. Uh, and then like maybe neighbors. Yeah, neighbors and, straight, yeah, and yeah. maybe folding clothes. I'm not sure. Um, but I know Neighbors is, is pretty hard-hitting. It talks about how J. Cole moves into, like, a, a rich neighborhood. He has, like, neighbors that literally thinks that yeah. thinking he's, like, dealing drugs. They call There's, the SWAT on him. They call the, right, they call the police on him. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny how he talks about his home being, like, a place where people can go and be themselves. And, like, friends, you know, anybody who's friends of his, you know, friends with a famous rapper, they can come uh, and really, like, just be open. And then he talks about how the cops were called and, like, that kind of changed things. He drops a lot of political references in here, too. Uh, we won't go into that too much, um, but even still, just from the the perspective of his friend, and then maybe some of the songs that's literally just J Cole, um, it's really interesting. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Like, I think J Cole is like surface level, like deep. Like okay. he, like he will attempt it. Like, and yeah. I, and, like there's something to be said for that, but it's like I was reading um, a back and forth between Shea Serrano and I forgot who. He, was on and it was like why is J. Cole bad and like so like Shay <laughs> said that J. Cole is like the last thirty minutes of a comedy movie where they're really trying to be funny and also say something serious but they're not saying anything at all. Damn, okay. And that true, was like true. oh man. Yeah, yeah like, that's like, that's like yeah, that's a takedown and like I yeah, think like yeah. I like the last thirty minutes of comedy movies. Right. Yeah. But, exactly. like, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> like, it's not the worst thing. But like, <laughs> true. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Dale, what do you think? Um, I, I saw that fan theory thing on Twitter, yeah. and I mean, there was a fan theory about um Force uh, Force was Drive. Really? Yeah. It was about like how it's like from his start to like him now, right? And learning about love and stuff. It doesn't really change my thoughts on the yeah. album. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. like it's 
It is what it is. I feel like, uh, especially with the eyes being spelled with a Z, I feel like there's something Pac probably did or would have done, mm-hmm. yeah. maybe a little better, maybe in one song. I feel like Kendrick did this as well. He also, also yeah. did this in um, Good Kid, Mad City, okay. and um, Sing About Me, I'm Dying of Thirst. Yeah. He did that a lot better in one song, okay. and then J. Cole did the album, no disrespect. Yeah. But I just feel like... It, but that's another just, thing I can't. have with J. Cole, yeah. too, is like when he... like is doing something exper like he like he copies from like the greats a lot. Oh yeah. Like yeah. all the time. Like yeah. born sooner. Like opposite of yeah, right, 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 yeah. Like, you can really like, tell like, all of that like he, I mean, can't really fault him for rapping over devil in your dress cuz that's cool. That's a yeah, great idea. It's, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. pretty cool. But he borrowed like um, not like let Nas down was like oh my god like one of the worst things I've ever like oh interesting yeah I mean the lyrics were interesting and it was an interesting story but the whole production behind it was a yeah little, just like I he, didn't mind it too much because yeah. I mean I mean, Kanye like made the, Big Brother so yeah but that's, that's yeah uh yeah touche yeah yeah it's hard good story though let Nas down honestly in my opinion um but yeah so we'll go through favorite songs real quick um for me honestly like. I want to say it's probably kind of mainstream, but I want to say Neighbors is, is definitely up there for me. Uh, Change is up there for me. Uh, and then, like, For Your Eyes Only, just a song. It's eight minutes. Like, it really drags out, honestly. But specifically, like, the last two minutes of that song, when it kind of recaps the whole album and talks about what it's about, for me, that just was really eye-opening. It was a good moment. Um, and then other than that, songs that I don't really like, Deja Vu, maybe, is just too hyped up for me. Like, all my friends were, like, playing Deja Vu at first, and I was like... This is not like the best song on this album. And then also, I mean, I understand that why they're there and why he did it, but like She's Mine Part 1 and 2, I mean, I just can't. I'm not trying yeah. to cry. You know what I mean? Like, I'm listening to J. Cole. I'm not trying to cry that much. Like, I'm trying to listen to a hard album. So for me, it's not that they're out of place, but for me, they're kind of out of place. Um, I just don't really like to listen to them that much. So I, those are the ones I skip on the album. Uh, I don't know about you guys. What do you guys think? All right. Uh, songs that I can keep and like bump in the whip. Mm-hmm. Immortal. Okay, true. Neighbors. I could bump uh, For Your Eyes Only. I don't yeah, mind it yeah. being eight minutes. I mm-hmm. think it's okay. Mm-hmm. But least favorite, definitely Deja Vu. Mm-hmm. Um, I could bump Bill Mentality. Yeah, I like once that Once in too. a while, depending yeah, on my yeah, mood. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Deja Vu, trash. That's only the cycling bin. <laughs> um, she's mine part one, because I don't hear part two enough, I guess. But part okay. one, that line about the, the head being better than Excedrin... It's like just that's and then it goes downhill from there. Yeah, it was yeah. Because I thought he was talking uh, about his daughter until he said that line. I was like, yeah, oh, it's yeah. not. Whoa. So, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, I know the same so, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I can't, can't deal with that. I pulled and close is soft, but like, I mean, I don't know. It's okay. It's good. Like I said, I see why it's on the album, but just like those cornball lines, like breakfast is really? all yeah. the milk. Yeah, yeah like, the almond milk was, was uh, too like, much. You didn't need to say it twice. <laughs> exactly. Agreed. That's. A, I don't think I saved any of the songs. No. But, like, I kind of... That's the worst part about having Apple Music and yeah. Spotify. Shout out to Student Discounts, by the way. Like, $4.99. Yes, yes, $4.99. Spotify, so yes. Spotify yes. and Apple Music. Yeah. Because it makes sense. Why not? So, I don't... If I had... I, I, all everything that you guys said, like I don't think I would say it any better or nicer. So. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll say for whom the bell toll, I really like. I like. Really? I like like sad voice J Cole. Like when you okay. can hear like the yeah, emotion in it. Yeah. Like he's like he sounds like he's like pleading. And, like, right. Yeah. So yeah. I like that side. When like you can really feel like that authentic like emotion. Yeah. So like. There's a couple different times this album where you can definitely feel that. Yeah, I mean, like, like, like when, when you'll be and you can hear him like he's like crying in his yeah, voice. Like, yeah, it's like almost like the chance like inflection like yeah, like for sure. Or, like Kendrick too, like Kendrick mm-hmm. on you, like that yeah. kind of like it's yeah. like hard to hear, but like yeah, you can tell. I like, like how Jay Cole's like, voice sounds like it. Like I think sure. he has a nice like smooth voice. Mm-hmm. I like when he uses it. In a oh, different he does. Way. Like, yeah, I mean, it gets really emotional. Like at the very end of Change, you have such a like a. I mean, I would say it's a hard song, but it's a groovy song, and then it kind of like outros into this like really weird like funeral scene. Yeah. Like you hear J. Cole kind of crying, like talking about like how he's gonna kill whoever killed his friend, and uh, yeah, that's talk about emotional J. Cole. Like there it is. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, as, as far as like final thoughts go, I mean, I don't know if we were like Rotten Tomatoes like this album like percentage wise. I mean, I'd call it like. I'd call it like 60s, maybe 70s. I don't know if that's a little too high. A little too high for Dion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, what do you think? It's a nice, it's a nice 60. Yeah. On yeah, its like, highest day, 64. Okay. I think yeah. it's like an average to above average album. Like yeah. that's 60s to 70s. Like. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, 
I love the concept behind it. To me, like, that makes it a lot. I think that, like, he had a purpose, like, why he dropped it at this day and age, like, why now, why he called it what he called it, obviously. Um, and then, yeah, he was just trying to tell a story in my, in my mind. Yeah, but, I'm uh, never mad at anybody for making music. No. Exactly, you can't be mad. It wasn't for us anyway. So. It wasn't for us anyway, yeah, right. It was, it was, it was really it for the girl. for our ears, <laughs> let alone our eyes. <laughs> not for our eyes, not for our ears, not for any other things. Uh, all right, guys. Well, uh, once again, for the FS View, I'm Jackson. He's Perry. He's Dion. We'll catch you guys later. You really think this is better than Still Brazy? No. Oh, as soon okay. as I said it, I was I would try to think of an album, and then I was like, hold on, what's Dion written about? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I was like.